All right. <clears throat> Acts chapter 8. We left off. Verse 4. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere uh, preaching the word. We discussed that with verse 4 saying that basically all saved people are preachers and are really called to do that. Uh, wow. I just noticed this now. Do you see that uh, verse 4 in your uh, notes? Or is that in your old notes? I don't know if it is. Do you see verse 4? I'll say people are preachers in your notes. You, yes. you do see it? Cross reference of second Corinthians It's in the new notes. You do see that. All right. I was going to start. All the saved uh, preachers, all the saved, they're Christ ordained. And uh, oddly enough, we're doing uh, John 15, 16 for our sermon. I didn't notice that till just now. That's what we're doing for our sermon. Uh, they did perform, which we do not do today, and that are miracles. And we, we covered that last week, the apostolic signs that were given. Uh, we had seen as far as those that were in Samaria because they went throughout Judea and Samaria and then soon to go to the uttermost parts when the first missionaries were sent out in Acts 13. That seed had already been sown there with the woman at the well in John chapter 4. And the results of the preaching, there was the preaching that took place in verse 6 the power was displayed in these apostolic uh, signs and then the praise. There was great joy in that city. All right, that's as far as we got last week. Father, bless us, our um, uh, <clears throat> all services today, and uh, that uh, you would just, may they bring fruit. Father, we pray for fruit in the preaching and the teaching of your word now. In Christ's name, amen. And we want to see fruit. Uh, you know, how many got saved on the day of Pentecost? 3,000. How many died when the law came in? 3,000. Now, we look at that and we say, that's, a, that's quite a bit. And they added more and more to the, this. And, you know, it was people are getting saved in leaps and bounds. And uh, now I've heard this, that uh, in the preaching of Peter, uh, for 3,000 people to hear and to be saved, that, that's uh, if they were literally under the sound of his voice, but they did have the tongues, spoke in different tongues, so there were others that were uh, preaching that day too. They saw, got to see that. But I, I've, uh, in, in, uh, in the reading of all this, over the years, they estimate a million people were at Jerusalem. But then when the, those that say, well, in the, uh, in the long run, it, compared to the ball, very few are really, 3,000 compared to a million. But that's on the assumption that a million people heard it. You know, when Peter preached, or they did that with the tongues, did a million people hear that? You know? For, you know, that's, that's quite a, a leap of faith or, or an assumption. You know, they do a lot of assuming that there were a million people in Jerusalem at the time. But anyway, we, we like to see results. So we are going to be doing, we went out soul winning on um, Thursday night, so I figured uh, I'll preach on that. We preached on church attendance and, uh, uh, you know, uh, how amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord? In Psalm 84, the only place amiable shows up, and our attendance went down to an all-time low on Wednesday night. I mean, that's not the results I'm after. That, that's not the results I'm after. And I don't think that's the results that the Lord is after. Now, we're going to preach on soul winning, so the results we're after is not for that. <laughs> we, we want the attendance to increase or participation to increase. Now I have preached when we were just up in the loft there about soul winning and uh, uh, I had we had a, a Calvinist in the uh, church I mean a hardcore five 
point Calvinist. And he was all offended at that preaching about it. it was, well, and you know him. He ended up over at your place. He doesn't go there anymore. But you know him. I helped move the guy. He's a nice guy. And his wife is nice. He has nice children and all. And how it all shakes out, man. I forget what he said to me. He said, um, um, I forget what he said to me. For me to say, uh, to refute the Calvinism, I, I forget what I said to him. And, uh, oh, I think I said to him, well, since everything is predestined, then God predestined me to, to preach that. And he, he, he was taken back by it. He, he was really taken back. Whatever I said, he, he got taken back. And then I, he said to me, oh, you got to justify it somehow. Well, God predestined you to say that so it would make me feel this way so I will leave. <laughs> to make me leave. It, it, was the, it was the weirdest thing. He had to justify his feelings. Because he doesn't believe. I said, well, we should be soul winning 24-7. And not that, and that's what he agreed with. And he didn't agree with organized soul winning. And uh, it just, it just it, no matter what you say, you're not going to win. No matter what I say, I, I'm not going to win. But we want to see results. Results. We want results. So the results of Philip's preaching uh, in verse 12, <clears throat> they believed the preaching unto salvation. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. So salvation occurred in verse 12. And then what are they saved from? is what occurs before that, verses 9 and through 11. But there was a certain man named Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, bewitched the people to Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they regarded, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries, so the idea is uh, uh, the separation. In other words, when a person gets saved, now they become separated from what they were doing or repent, a turn from one and turning to another. All right, so they turn from Simon and turn to another. And notice the submission. Once they got saved, they submitted to uh, water baptism. They were baptized both men and women. And so obviously it's believers only, no baby. It's believers only. Now, if we do a baby, not baptism, but we have uh, done, uh, it could only be three or four people, tops. People generally don't ask for it. Uh, it, 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 ought, it ought, sort of even gets into this not ecumenical Protestant type thing. If you do a baby, it's a what? No, no, not a christening. No, that's the bit. A dedication. If we were to do that, it's a dedication. And we kind of steer away from that. Like, you know, just raise them the best you can. You know, they have to make up their own mind. But the results of Phil's pe uh, preaching, they did believe, they repented, and they were believers only. So the salvation, the separation, and the submission. Uh, when the revival occurs here, uh, when Saul, there was the persecution, <clears throat> verses, uh, verse 1, and then there was this great revival. Preaching went out, and opposition always follows. You know, it, it comes and goes, comes and goes. So uh, uh, opposition follows revival. And there was a certain man called Simon, which before in the same city used sorcery. So there's always this opposition. Now, I've read that he is the Judas Iscariot of the book of Acts, the Judas Iscariot. 
By the way, is Simon's story end, did Simon's story end in this in Acts eight? Is a even as a casual reader, those that know have read that. Is, this, is there a conclusion to Simon? There is no conclusion. He said, pray that, that whatever you said, uh, Peter, pray that, that, that this doesn't happen to me. And so there is no final conclusion as to whether he is saved or lost. There's really no definitive answer to it. But uh, Simon, pardon, did somebody say something? It's for God to sort it out. Uh, Simon believed. It does say that he believed. Now, but the, was this belief unto salvation? It says he, he uh, uh, now I wrote down in the notes here, but not the saving belief. And he does become baptized. Then Simon himself believed also when he was baptized. He continued with Philip and wondered while holding the miracles and signs which were done. Now, uh, notice it's, it's still this transitional book as to when they're going to receive the Holy Spirit. We say, well, you're not saved until you get the Holy Spirit. You know, this transitional book in here. So it, it, there, there is room for debate and question. And are there definitive answers to this? In the end, there probably isn't. But he bewitched these people for a long time. Uh, one sinner, let's, let's look at that, Ecclesiastes 9, 18. Go back, if you would, to, let's look it up. Ecclesiastes 9, 18. Uh, one sinner destroyeth much good. I, I'm trying to think of examples. Give me some uh, modern example. When I say modern, in the last hundred years, modern example. One sinner destroyeth much good. You know what? I was going to say that first and foremost. But that popped in your head. Now, I think he had a lot of help along the way. But... Uh, I think the uh, the first and only field marshal ever to surrender, ever, I mean, they they fight to the end, was at Stalingrad. He was the first and only field marshal ever to surrender. And I think, uh, and you'll see it in movies, uh, others, that I am done taking orders from that corporal. Because he was only a corporal. I'm done taking orders from that corporal. You know, because he took over militarily, and he didn't have any savvy about military. But he he uh, basically destroyed uh, all of all of Europe and Germany. Uh, who destroyed uh, Egypt? One sinner there. They said Moses destroyed it, but ultimately there was Pharaoh. Pharaoh destroyed Egypt. One sinner destroyeth much good. Now you could say, well, Egypt wasn't much good. But, the, but look at the destruction that took place. Can you think of some uh, one sinner, you know, through legislation, uh, something that is said, somebody does a little, oh, what was the one, uh, madam, who's the one on abortion? Mary, madam, Who's the one that... Oh, I was prayer, Madeline Murray O'Hare. Madeline... 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 Murray, Murray O'Hare. And that was about prayer in school. Oh, is that prayer in school? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but now she's repented of that and came out against what she was for. Hasn't she? She protested because she had a child in school and she didn't want to take religion... And that was prayer school. Was she anything to do with abortion? No. No. That was, that was... Well, that's when it went to the courts. Yeah. But there had to be some person. But when Madeline Murray O'Hare's son got saved as an adult. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that is true. Yeah. Uh, Darwin. 
I'm trying to think of individuals that come to the forefront. Darwin, that's one. And, and the stuff that's under glass that you couldn't touch, uh, what was that? Anybody know what that was? Before he died, he, uh, he had to come up with something because he went on the expedition. Anybody that knows what that was? You mean the missing link? Or the missing link. link. Yeah. yeah. Like bone or something? No, no, that's, uh, you know, that's uh, Nebraska. I think the pig bone, the pig's tooth is Nebraska man. All this is, it's based on a tooth. No, uh, no, it's a, it, he had a skeleton. He, he put this thing together and because he claimed it's so frail and so, you know, it's millions and millions of years old that the, this is the missing link. You could touch it so it was under glass. You know, I'm pretty sure it's Darwin. Now, I, you, you might be right, but I think it's Darwin. He had to, he had to produce the goods. And I know that some of it are chicken bones. It's a conglomeration of different bones. He probably had the chicken for dinner and figured it out. <laughs> and he slept on it, had acid indigestion, and decided, well, I got to come up with something. So he sticks all these bones together. Chicken gave us all for science, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but Darwin, uh, Leakey is another guy. Usually there's a, a, a core group more than just one. You've got to have other people going along with this. But this fella here, Simon, uh, uh, had these people bewitched for a long time. It wasn't like a week or two. It says, uh, back if you would to Acts chapter uh, 8, uh, in verse 11, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Uh, how, how did uh, Hitler come into power? What would have been a, a underlaying driving force? Starvation the, and lack of work. The belly. Yeah, that, I mean, there, I'm sure there's other reasons, but one was the Great Depression. It was worldwide. They had no food. A, a wheelbarrow full of marks was worthless. And so people are driven quickly by their stomachs. What's driving people to the streets in Venezuela? Lack of food. And so they, they, they want relief. It doesn't take long, right? It takes a little shorter with water. Right? Three days with food, you can last 40 days. Water, what is it? Three days. And it's desperate times. But one sinner destroyeth much good. Uh, verse 9, there's this man, Simon, the Judas Iscariot of the book of Acts. He was Satan's man in Samaria. Uh, about, about having her heresies, it, there is a verse about that. And it is in 1 Corinthians, I think it's 1 Corinthians 7. Uh, there must be heresies among you. The one that says uh, there must be heresies among you. Anybody want to help me find that? There must be heresies among you to manifest. Second Corinthians 7. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Eleven, thank you. First Corinthians eleven. First Corinthians eleven uh, nineteen. For there must be. Yeah, I know it's a, the left side, right column, top. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. All right, a heretic is a heretic a lost person or a saved person? Or could it be one, it could be either way, a heretic. We would say a heretic is, is a saved person with false doctrine. A man that is an heretic after the first or second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted. 
being condemned of himself. Titus 3, verse 10. But the idea is if you've got this false doctrine amongst you, it makes the light seem to be all the brighter. Right? When it's dark in a room and you light one candle, all eyes are focused on that one candle power. There's equivalence uh, in electricity. One candle power is equivalent to what? Isn't there an equivalent? To one watt. No. No. Watt is, is a, uh, wattage is power, isn't it? Yeah. Wattage that, is power. That, that's current times voltage. That's one formula. You take the current. All right. But, but they do put it in terms that are old-fashioned terms, a candle power. A horsepower is the same thing. One horsepower, I think, is equivalent to lifting 10 or 20,000 pounds one foot in one minute, I think. That's yeah, it's a, it's a similar formula. There, there is a, I, I, it's been so, it's been 40 years, I can't remember, but there's equivalences to this. Uh, you know what, that, that is a unit, oh, okay. yeah. uh, and I, and tell you the truth, I can't remember. The can candle power put can, became foot candles, and then it became lumens. Lumens. Yeah. Okay. So like a, a, a 60 watt bulb is like 800 lumens. All right. Uh, but he was Satan's man, and so when, uh, uh, this was not a light in the church, this was somebody outside the church, or darkness outside of the church. If you have a heretic in the church, it then sheds light and makes the truth more pronounced. So it says there must be heresies among you. So when, to say that the church is going to be totally clean of that, I mean, you go to Second Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and disprove that. That there's got to be these, you know, you're going to have a, 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 a Presbyterian in there, a, I mean a Calvinist, a Presbyterian, you're going to have that kind of stuff in there. Uh, but it, it sheds light on the truth. Uh, or it does, I mean, it makes the truth all the brighter. Uh, his belief was based upon what he saw. Now, if we're, if we're going to preach that he's lost, we can, we can then go and try to find things that would prove that. When my, Simon himself believed also when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. He... he, he based his belief on what he saw. But see, you can play devil's advocate. Who based his belief on what he saw? In, in uh, John 20, or John 19. Thomas. Doubting Thomas. And Jesus said, blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. And so there was the, the signs that he saw, and, he, and it was based upon what he saw. Uh, <laughs> Saving faith is based on what you hear, what you hear. And I've done sermon uh, on this. The people with one accord, verse 6, gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Hearing and seeing, there, now there was hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. So there, it's a mixture of both there. Uh, but faith cometh by hearing, and what? Hearing by the word of God. That's how you and I acquire faith. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Now, uh, yesterday, uh, last night, we were invited over to uh, 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 Jim and Tiffany's. So we went, uh, the wife and I went over there. And they were dealing with exchange students from China. And uh, over... You know, they went to Cedar Point. Was this something recently? Is Cedar Point open? Ben opens the first night. Okay, so maybe it, it okay, th this must be recent. We're, we're talking in the last month. They went to Cedar Point. They went, uh, they went to Niagara Falls. What else did they do? They did some pretty big highlights. And they were pretty well amazed at, at America. They said that they're majoring in uh, English and going to Cleveland State. And that was the exchange was with Cleveland State. Apparently, Cle 
when I said, well, when I was in school, it, the education department was considering taking Cleveland State down because it wasn't notable, but, but that's 40 years ago. Things can change in 40 years. And so they were there because it's renowned, I guess, in English. I don't know. What else did they do? They went to the point. Oh, they went to Florida, California, but not with, but with Jim and Tiffany. They took him to the biggest candy store in the world, I guess. Here, please, please. I've never, I have please. never heard of that. <laughs> I have never heard of that. But they straightened me out. Yeah, it's right there, apparently. I've never heard of it. They, but they did some things. Anyway, they were witnessing, uh, Tiffany's witnessing to these girls. And just give, you know, what they're praying and then uh, why do I believe what I believe and so on. So she, she was faithful in witnessing and then they, they were glad for it. So we really are happy for it. But she said they, they wanted her to feel as equally happy for them in what they believe. And folks, we can't do that. What do you think they believe in? Buddha. Buddha? Uh, now, these are all logical steps. Buddha is probably the first. Reincarnation, I don't know if a Buddhist believes in that. A, a Hindu does. Buddha, reincarnation, anybody else? This was, this was weird. This was off the map. Believe in man. Humanism. Oh, you know what? Uh, humanism, yeah, that, that would be prevalent. In other words, they would, as they become more and more edgy, they even want to get rid of Buddha. Here's what they believe in. Yeah, yeah, communism, you got to get rid of God, any, any form of God. They believe that when they die, they become part and visit their loved ones through their dreams. Anybody ever hear of that? Some kind of thing like I have never heard of that. This this was all news to me. Yeah. And some kind of ancestor worship. So that might be prevalent. And uh, it, it was just strange that. Uh, uh, so logically thinking, I, I want to put myself in their shoes. Put yourself in their shoes. You've been. You've been brought up that way. You and I are brought up in our culture and what we believe. They've been brought up in, in their culture and what they believe. You know, the Hindus are brought up their way, Buddhists. Everybody's brought up the way they've been. But once you start sorting this out and what you believe, logically speaking, I mean, we're talking about people who are really supposed to be intelligent. Is that God created everything. That's what we believe. And that... Uh, such as a Hindu, they believe the earth is floating through space on the, on the back of four elephants which are standing on a tortoise. Now, folks, we know that's not true. I mean, that's just, that's illogical. So logically speaking, God came, died for us. For, I mean, to me, it is, it's more logical if we want to sort this out intellectually, these, you have to believe by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. He was one, one. Well, they believe in what they believe. I've never heard of that. But anyway, seeds were planted. The hard thing is to convince somebody that the Bible is true. Oh, it, it, everything that they learn is false. That's yeah. what's going really to learn. See, see, now what book do they have to believe well, these? Well, it's not even that. You go to a Catholic. You're telling me that I don't have to get baptized in the communion and this and that and that and this. Yeah. All you have to do is believe. Yeah, but we do it by the book they no, carry. No, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I found it very weird to believe in that I'm going to haunt somebody in their dreams. 
Yeah. And, and for them, it was it, it was uh, uh, what what is a, a Hindu when they get to Nirvana? Uh, there's a health spa out here in uh, Twinsburg or out that way, uh, Aurora. That's called that. Not Nirvana. What's the other one? Where the Greek gods go? Olympus. No. And the Mennonites would go there. It was a hell spot. But I looked up the word. It's a. It's it's the Greek heaven where the Greek gods go. I don't know. You got to believe some weird things. <clears throat> But they must think they're we're equally as weird. Right? If belief is what he saw, uh, they said, uh, thinking about what you had brought up, Hitler, in documentaries, now you, you can only believe what you hear, you know, that the whole country was Heil Hitler within weeks once that had started. If you didn't Heil Hitler, you got a Luger in your face. <laughs> yeah. If you didn't, you ended up in a in a camp. So I liken that onto the three thousand that got saved compared to the million in Jer Jerusalem that didn't get saved. They were the odd man out. The the minority are, are in the end are the ad, odd man out. But his belief is what he saw. Our belief is in what we hear. Uh, and not all belief is saving belief. Uh, James 2, that must be uh, devils believe and tremble, I'm sure. But James 2. James 2, verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So not all belief is saving belief. <clears throat> and, it, and, it, and it shows that Satan infiltrates the church. So Saul was attempting how, if, if, if he's representing Satan, how is he going to destroy the church? He's destroying it from without outside the church, by killing the church. Simon then, Satan is trying to destroy the church then from within the church. Again, that would be, uh, uh, as far as 11, you said 1 Corinthians 11 was the one on uh, about um, heresy in the church. Well, 2 Corinthians 11, 2 Corinthians 11 is where Satan can show himself as an angel of light and his ministers work from within the church. If you can't beat him, right, join him. Uh, Satan's infiltration. Let's look at uh, some of these. Uh, at, uh, with, without going there, without going there, Satan's infiltration. Uh, oh boy, I misspelled. How do you misspell Jude? <laughs> but you spelled it right in the notes, didn't you? Yeah. 2 Corinthians 11, Satan's infiltration. He shows up as an angel of light. Jude 4. What was that? What It says, uh, certain men crept in unawares, changing the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness. Acts 20 is where Paul says that after the space of three years, he wept continually that what was going to come into the church? A certain animal. Wolves were going to come in, not sparing the flock. In John 10, oh, <clears throat> it's uh, at the beginning of John 10 where he says he's the door, and he is, uh, uh, he's the door, and he's the good shepherd. Before that, he said, it's, uh, they, they come up some other way, all right? False ap apostles or false prophets come up some other way. Uh, John chapter, so let's start there. Let's go to John 10. It's at, the, it's, it's at the beginning. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door under the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same 
is a thief and a robber, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. All right, so it's it's this that comes up uh, some other way. A stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. And it, it does not seem to be, uh, you know, they say by their fruits you'll know them. That, that verse, by their fruits you'll know them. What, uh, is that in reference to Christians or the, the shepherd? And I don't, when I say the shepherd, I, I don't mean Jesus. I mean the preacher. Is that, is that by their fruits you'll know them? Because we, we tend to use that verse like saying, judge not, we should be judged without putting it in its context. Is that the sheep or the, or the minister? If you were to guess, you have to guess one. Pardon? No. It, it's, it's, I, I'm pretty sure it's dealing with the preacher. In this case, his infiltration is through the preacher. It's through the preacher. John 10, again, it's not a sheep. It's, it's, I think it's directly in reference to the preacher. Acts 20, it's, it's a wolf. Acts 20, it's again pointed towards the preacher. It has nothing to do with the sheep. Wolves eat sheep. <clears throat> There's anything I learned from Pastor Kip. Wolves eat sheep. Goats don't eat sheep food. They go elsewhere to eat. And sheep eat sheep food. Sheep eat sheep food. Goats don't hang around because they don't want sheep food. They go somewhere else. And wolves come in because yum yum, eat them up. They eat sheep. They come in to see how many disciples they can get to follow after them and their false doctrine. Verse 29, I know this. That's Acts 20, 29. After, after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. In uh, 2 Corinthians 11, in the, and we'll go in that order. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. Uh, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. No marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Uh, Jude 4 is, uh, is a repeat of 2 Peter chapter 2. That uh, heresy is coming, Second Peter chapter 2, Jew is, it's already here. Apostasy is here. And folks, if it was that way 2,000 years ago, what is it today? The church has grown into this massive tree. What's the tree likened unto in, in, in um, Matthew 13? Uh, the mustard seed grows in, is the smallest of seeds, it grows into this enormous, it, it says tree, it must be this huge bush, and then what lodges in it? And the dirty birds, all the birds, right? There's only the clean, one clean bird in the Bible, the rest of dirty birds. All right, so Jude 4, for there are certain men, they crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our uh, God into um, lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I have in my side margin, putting in there anti-nominism uh, or selfishness uh, and, and so on, that uh, uh, the worldly, worldly ways just enter into the church. Satan's motive, back if you would to uh, Acts 8, it promotes, Satan's motive is to promote himself. You know, there's a book out, I, I, I was dreaming about it, uh, Satan's Masterpiece. Anybody ever read that? Or it's, it might be a sermon, it could be a sort of the Lord's sermon, Satan's Masterpiece. What would, if Satan were to have a masterpiece, what would he have? What, 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 do you think it, what do you think it is? I couldn't remember what it's about, but I'm assuming what it's about. Satan's masterpiece. 
If you were to guess, they can't, okay, uh, that's logical. The Catholic Church, uh, say that again. An organized, or you could say, go, go, go a step farther, an organized Baptist church, Satan's mass. I think the reference is, is to, uh, like the NIV, is to the Bible, Satan's masterpiece. Another could say the Antichrist. Another could say the image, the image of the beast. Uh, but the Catholic Church, or a false church, Satan's masterpiece, that is a title to something, Satan's masterpiece, that, that I've read along the way here. But Satan's infiltrate, his motive is to promote himself. What is the Holy Spirit's motive? Is to promote Jesus. That's John 15. Uh, verse 18, and when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. All right, so he wants to, to promote himself. He's willing to make this purchase. He wants this power to be able to lay hands on others so that, that they had, uh, give me also this power. So he wanted to be able to do that, lay hands on people so they could receive this power too. And in the end, it was to promote himself that he, verse 9, that he is the great one. Now listen, when he was no longer the great one, what happened? He was, they didn't follow him, they followed the Lord, and they, they left. And so he wants this promotion back. He wants this back. For I perceive that thou art in the ball of goodness and the bond of iniquity. He was bitter over, I would assume, this bitterness is he lost the preeminence. Who else wanted the preeminence? I don't know how many times that shows up in the Bible. Preeminence. Uh, Diotrephes. Yes, and where? Third. Third John. I don't think it's second John. It could be Second John. It's about verse eight. Uh, Diotrephes wants the preeminence. All right. So they want to be pre, uh, promoted. Verses twenty-one and twenty-three. That thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, I don't know why I wrote that down, the perception. It, that was the perception that Peter had, I would assume, the perception that he gave. Simon's magic. How did he do this? Now, when we look up the word sorcery, uh, it does appear, I decided to look up the biblical definition of it in the lexicon. Uh, it, it's called a magician, witchcraft. In, in the book of Revelation, it's pharmacy, is where we get the word pharmacy. And how do they, and what is that in, in, uh, directly in relation to what? Pharmaceutical. Drugs. Uh, lately, the drug in this country, it's legal to prescribe. Is this opioid? opioid? Yeah. Is that like saying, oh, am I wrong in saying that's opium? It's derived from opium. It's a derivative of opium. And where does opium come from? Poppies. Poppies. There's whole islands like that. If you go to the Greek mythology island where they, they're calling and wooing people to come on the island. Once you get on the island, you become an addict. You know, they're trying to get sailors to land there. But you are mesmerized and you become uh, addicted to whatever this is, bewitched. Now, if we, uh, 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 folks, he's no, he's no faker. And so, uh, uh, yeah, we went back here to Exodus 7, and well, let's pick it up here next week. He's no faker for, he bewitches the people for a long time. And, and they were, they, they were seduced by this. Uh, in, in reading Rockman uh, on, on some of this, he said, and if you think if if you think that's easy to do, to bewitch, he, he said from the dog catcher to the mayor, for a long time he said go ask Hitler, 
and, and he'll, he'll throw names out there. Go ask Hitler and ask uh, uh, Hitler and John F. Kennedy. He bewitched the they bewitched the people for a long time. And where are they? And, and when they lose their following, you know, Hitler does himself in. You know, they lose their following. He's no faker, and he, basically, it's not easy to do to to uh, fool and and have it's uh, oh in the. Uh, I don't know if it's Grimm's Fairies fairy tale. Who bewitches all the people? The Pied Piper. To get rid of the rats. The Pied Piper. Oh, and he takes all the children. Isn't that the story? How, does it, how do they get the children back? They don't get the children back? They have to pay up. Oh, they have to pay. Pay the Piper. Is that what I think? Where you got to pay the Piper? All right. That all makes sense. Pay the piper, the pied piper play, plays. They get rid of the rats, they get rid of the... Oh, he gets rid of the rats. And because they didn't pay the piper, he takes the children. That's how the story goes. Yeah. But uh, he bewitches them for a long time, uh, of which all gave he, got him to be a great one, that people want this power, this position. And we'll pick this up here next week at that point. Father, bless now our preaching in Christ's name. Amen.